First up, though, how would you like to take pictures like these? Some amazing images there, and the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition marks the opening of an exhibition featuring the finalists' pictures. Here to tell us more is one of the judges, Joe Cornish. <laughs> now, Joe, tell us about the size of this competition. Who could enter? Where does it from? Anybody can enter. It's All over the world? Absolutely. It's an international competition. It's the big one. Over 40,000 entries this year. How on earth do you start? Well, you start <laughs> very early on, I think, working through 40,000 pictures. You do. It takes months. Oh, and there are, two, there are three rounds of judging. Yeah. Uh, first to kind of winnow it down to about 12,000. And then uh, for the second round, they take it down to 1,000. And then there's a final round of judging. And getting through to the final. Yeah. Well, now, you're an accomplished photographer, so particularly of wildlife in this country. Hints, tips and wrinkles. You know, we go out armed with an ordinary little camera. I mean, are there any obvious things or obvious mistakes that most of us make when we do it? Well, I think that uh, the, the main thing is that you need to love uh, the subject matter. And know and, it. Uh, and know it, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so the mistakes most people make with wildlife is they make too much noise. Uh, and they take the dog with them. Not a good idea. <laughs> Leave the dog and the cat. Absolutely. Do you need things like this, little hides? A hide, it can be uh, helpful, uh, but this is very much for the dedicated few. These yeah. sorts of things will be used by people who would set up the, the hide maybe a day or two days before, uh, allow the local wildlife to get used to it, right. and then they would uh, enter it while it was still dark yeah. and spend possibly all day in the hide. Dedication, as you yeah. say. Now, we see people with enormous cameras and great long telephoto lenses. Mm. Sitting in front of you are two very ordinary-looking little cameras. Are you suggesting we can take award-winning pictures with a simple camera like that? I think so, yes. Yeah. I think it's often exaggerated uh, how important equipment is. Equipment is important, and the dedicated photographers clearly use the very best equipment. Yeah. But anybody can enjoy their photography and make great photographs with a simple camera. And is it composition and things like that? I mean, you composition know, what you and lighting, Alan. But, oh, yeah, well, that's it, you see. <laughs> I get very confused with F numbers. <laughs> oh, it was F, F8.0 at 125th of a second. Well, I've gone, you know. I'm yeah, I know, I know what you mean. So is it, but it's learning your camera and practising to see what it can do, I suppose. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Most, even, even something like this, a small, a relatively small Canon mm. will have uh, quite, a, quite a powerful telephoto lens, which means we can still get relatively close to things. But what is often forgotten is it's the context. If we get too obsessed with just making the face of the animal, we miss the context. So the landscape itself is also very, it's very also important. important. Well, here are three people who know all of that because they're all finalists in the Veolia Environnement Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. Marcel Van Oosten, Paul Goldstein and Sandra Bartoka. <laughs> This is the stand out of the way of this, is it? This is astonishing. Tell us about your picture. What is it? It's a natural rock arch and it uh, was photographed in the eastern part of Chad, which is a country just to the south of Libya. It's in and Africa, Chad, yes. It is, yeah. yes. Gosh, and were you deliberately waiting for the stars to come out and uh, would you just happen to be there? Was it a but, quick grab or a, a long time coming? No, it was not a quick grab, but like Joe already said, it's all about composition and light. Mm. So I timed my visit here uh, with, uh, with full moon, basically. Yes. So this was shot at night. So all the light that you see here is, is from the moon and you can still, still see the stars. You uh, can, yeah. in abundance. What made this special from your point of view then, Joe? Essentially, the fact that when you first look at it, the lighting seems to be daylight. And then you see the stars and it's that the mystery uh, of yeah. moonlight rendered almost as sunlight. It really is an extraordinary picture because in many ways the, the composition is straightforward, uh, but the, the, it's, so, it's such an extraordinary sight. Most of us would think starlight must be dark, yeah. but the right. camera enables us to see this extraordinary landscape Sorry. in extraordinary light. Thank you very yeah. much, Master. We're going to Paul, Paul Goldstein. Paul, this is a remarkable 
shot too. I mean, we've, it seems to be in layers. Yeah, it, it was a, a situation like that. I, the light is, of course, important, as is composition, but preparation as well. I've been to Nakuru in Kenya a few times, and you need a lot of circumstances to make this happen. It's got to rain the night before, the rain's got to stop by a certain time, the 1,600 metres of altitude have got to be allowed to kick in, so it's got to be cold. And then, I think, critical, you've got to gamble. Now, I know uh, from studying this area that hyenas generally come along the shoreline to try and grab the infirm and the old or the, the very young flamingos. And I thought, I'm not actually going to try and photograph that because I've seen it before. If I go the other side looking into the sun, hopefully they'll put enough up into the yeah. sky and That's it was just a question of being there. Now, yeah. there's luck as well. I mean, <laughs> if you honestly think I picked those three... Oh, there they are. That's the one I've been waiting for. No, no. There I'm, were a few other frames as well. Then. Yeah, there was a few. <laughs> yes, we'll keep it into double figures just, I think. But it, it was just a moment. It's exceptional, this, isn't it? It is. It's fabulous. And the, the monochromatic rendering, I think, is particularly impressive. Monochromatic rendering, that's go. what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> the backlighting isn't easy. Oh, it's, it's difficult to expose it correctly, and it's difficult to uh, to master uh, the, the the kind of feel of it uh, yeah. that you have done here. The three flamingos are very important, without a doubt. That's what makes it such How a great image. How long did it take you from start to finish to get this shot? Then? Oh no, it's not a question. The actual moment lasted. There was, I suppose, conditions like that for about seven or eight minutes. And then, of course, the heat builds yes. up. You're close Keep to going. the equator and, and the mist is gone. And I'm with you on techniques. I mean, really, I'm all about the, the image uh, and the photograph rather than all the technical qualities. Yeah. People yeah. talk about histograms. I just about know the difference between an f-stop and a bus stop, but not much more. <laughs> uh, and, so and so, so to me, it's just about the photograph. Get, yeah. Do the graft, and if you do the graft, you can sometimes get the craft uh, out of it. Brilliant. Well, you're from the UK. Marcel is from the Netherlands. I'm now going to Sound, who is from Germany. So tell us about your photograph. Yeah, well, this was taken on a mission for a pan-European project, Wild Runners of Europe, and the aim was to photograph um, the orchids in southern Italy because uh, there is a place where there are 69 different species for, of orchids on a small peninsula. This is the orchid here. You've got yeah. what looks like hair's tail grass there. Hair's tail grass and a tongue orchid, yes. Yeah, astonishing. Joe, your attraction to the... Well, it's obvious. It's just such a beautiful design in a way. But, I mean, it is, what do you see in it? Well, I think that, again, it's interesting. It's been common to all of these images is there's an element of mystery. And it's been very cleverly executed. So you have uh, sharp focus on two different... Uh, two different planes, which mm. technically is quite difficult, but Sandra's done this in camera, mm. so she's made two exposures and combined them in camera. Uh, and, and that's allowed? That's that allowed. is allowed. Yeah. Um, so you, and yet, you get a slight ghosting, you see, of this yes. one here, yeah. and that's part of, of what gives it its beauty. But also, and especially for me, the colour combinations, cool tones in the foreground against these beautiful, warm, sunlit tones mm. in the background, and that makes it vibrate. Sounded a lot for me because it's so nice to see plants featuring. Often it's animals, you know, we get animals and birds, but clearly you like orchids, you're very keen on them, so... Yeah, I'm keen on orchids and actually I'm a designated plant photographer. <laughs> <laughs> so Wonderful. I do animals if they come by, but... <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about plants is A, they don't answer back and B, they stand still for quite a long time. Yeah, that's a good thing and everybody can do it in, uh, in their own backyard, so well, it's, it's very I hope they easy. do. The exhibition of all the finalists runs at the Natural History Museum until March next year. So if you want inspiration, go along. My thanks to Joe Cornish and to our three competition finalists, Marcel, Paul and Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> so the come this Friday afternoon, the Bond girl with the name you could never forget, Pussy Galore, alias actress Anna Blackman, talks about playing an emotional matriarch in her brand new movie. The Fonz himself, Henry Winkler, reveals his mission to get Britney's school kids reading again. We'll be sampling some of the best ciders around as we celebrate National Apple Day with a spiritual performance from the cast of the smash hit musical Ghost. And I'll be transforming another of you rundown backyards in the AT Garden. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.